Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah,
such as cannot be uttered. For when we know not what we ought to pray, the Spirit itself maketh intercession. Oh, hallelujah. Through us with groanings such as cannot be uttered. Now that's a good rendering of it, and that's the one we're used to. But the uh, mirror translation says that when we're unable to articulate what our spirit is trying to say, that the Holy Spirit will move beyond all of our fumbling. And it says that He hits the bullseye every time. And I want you to know there's a way for you to get an answer to everything you're asking for tonight. Amen. There's a way for you to change it, but I want to tell you one thing. The only way it will change is if you change it because He's give you all the authority and all the power and all the dominion. You need not pray for God to change nothing. Hallelujah. I'll tell you why. Because He's laid it in your hand and He's laid it in my hand. Isn't that wonderful? He's give us the authority. And you know we have the verse that says that the Lord won't give His glory to another. And we've always thought that was us. But that ain't so because He crowned us with His glory. He's saying I don't want, I'm not going to give my glory to no graven image. I'm not going to give my glory to no other God. But how many of you know if He gives it to you, He won't be giving it to no other God. He'll be giving it to who He is. Amen. He's the same God. Woo! And He's dwelling in us and He's made us what He is. Hallelujah. Well, glory, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. We are so happy that you could get out of your homes on this cold winds tonight. And bless your hearts if you think it's cold tonight. Just huddle up and wait for tomorrow. You will be hunting somebody to snuggle with. Amen. It will be mighty chilly. But I can tell you one thing. Praise the Lord. The folks up north going to church in the snow. And so we didn't have to drive out on no snow tonight. And we're happy to be here. And we're in a good warm building. Warm enough. It's hot to me, but it's warm, warm to you all, I guess. Amen. But anyway, we're in the presence of the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And you take your liberty in the Lord tonight. Let Him speak to you. Let Him bless you. Praise the Lord. Get your mind off yourself and get your mind on Him tonight and see what the Spirit will do for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen to God. So wonderful to have the Holy Ghost and to know who you are in Him. Hallelujah. Woo. To pray and know you're touching God. To speak and know the Father's in control. That's the beauty of this life we're living. We're not living a normal life. We're not living a mundane life. We're not living an ordinary life. We're living a supernatural life. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. I just bless all of you tonight. And I want you to remember that we're right now in the process of gathering up a missions offering for the work in Nicaragua. So don't forget that. We'll run that right on through till the end of this month. And tonight we want to receive the weekly offering for this midweek service. And we're going to ask for, uh, let's see, let's have uh, Dylan and Audrey come and receive the offering this evening. Bless you as you give to the Lord in His name tonight. Amen. Yeah.
praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I am going right back into that Ephesians where we were last Wednesday night. Uh, the Lord started talking to us so good about a, a kingdom identity. And anyway, I felt the leading of the Lord today to just get right in there. So that's where I'm ultimately going to end up. But I want to uh, lay a little bit of groundwork from the book of John. Uh, and towards the latter part of the 14th chapter, you can read there with me or listen to me read it and then go join me in Ephesians. But uh, John the 14th chapter and uh, John the 16th chapter, I'm going to read a little bit out of John 14, John 16. I might quote one out of John 15, but anyway, if I do, you'll be right there. But I'm going to start in the 10th verse of John the 14th chapter, and I'm going to read on till I'm done here, probably about verse 20 maybe, these 10 verses. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, He doeth the works. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall ye do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. What a verse. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Now he's loosening them into an authority they had not yet possessed. And that was the ability to use his name. They had gone under the covering of his name. They had gone out under the delegation of who he was. But he was always present in flesh when they did. But now they're getting ready to toddle off into new territory. Now they're fixing to step into a place they've never walked before. He's not going to be there in the flesh. And so we have a word that kicks in that sounds really wonderful to me, and that word is greater. Yeah. Greater. 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 Not only the works shall you do, but greater works than these. We have a very common verse we quote. Greater is He that is within me than He that is in the world. Uh, the book of Hebrews is a book that talks about greater things. Uh, particularly, it talks about better things. But it gives a few greaters. <laughs> He's obtained a greater position and a greater name. Oh my Lord, and it's a greater covenant. But this is what the Lord said to them. As soon as He said, greater works than these shall you do, He links it. Conjunction and meaning that you must enter into this before the other will work. Right. Yeah. Glory be to God. It won't happen if you just say, well, I believe on Him and bless God I've got His name. And Jesus said, no, you'll enter into a greater measure of me. You'll enter into a greater portion of me. You'll enter into a greater anointing than that that you know right now. It just won't be my mantle, so to say, over you but it'll be me on the inside of you doing the work. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Well, how do you know that's what he meant because of what he said before? He said in that 10th verse, I'm in the Father, and the Father's in me. 
And what I say to you, I say not of myself, but the Father which dwelleth within me. Hallelujah. He doeth the works. Can you say amen? amen? Oh, glory to God. And then he said he had not given them the power yet to use his name of their own accord, but now he gives them that power and says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Can you understand that that word Son right there is the Son that's in you? That's the Son, and as you're that Son, that Son's in you. He's, amen. And Jesus is Father there. Hallelujah, without a doubt. And verse 14, he reiterates that if you shall ask anything in my name, well, glory to God, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I'll pray the Father. And He'll give you another comforter. Now the word another means one of the self-same in the Greek. It don't mean a second one. It means one of the self-same. Jesus did not go by and send a totally different other. He sent His own Spirit. That's what the Holy Ghost is. The Spirit of Jesus Christ. Can you say Amen? Praise the Lord. And if... Jesus and the Holy Ghost were two separate things, then Jesus could have sent the Holy Ghost or called into being the Holy Ghost in the earth before He ever left. But since they're one and the same and they're inseparable, He can't send the Holy Ghost till He goes away. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost is not the third member of nothing. And worse, it's worse than saying third members when they say third person. That ain't even in the Bible. There are not three persons in heaven. John said when he seen the throne, he only seen one, like unto the Son of Man. Can you say amen? And this one God has different manifestations for sure, but it's still the same God. It's not another. Can you say praise the Lord? The first greatest revelation of the Bible on that matter is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Amen. And so he says, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. And then he said, I'll pray the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he'll send you another comforter. And that he may, watch this now, that he may abide with you forever. 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 Can you say amen? He couldn't say he'll abide with you forever and then you say Jesus left. You're your shouting now. Hallelujah. Jesus, the flesh left. But the Spirit of God ain't never left. Woo, hallelujah. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But lo, I'm with you always. And you say, praise the Lord. And it's imperative you get that because most believers, even tongue-talking ones, believes that Jesus... Totally, absolutely, unequivocally went away and departed off the earth. That he sent another third person back, which is the Holy Ghost, who's just making do till he finally gets back here one day. That's false doctrine, friend. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. You know you can argue with opinion. But you can't argue with the Word. The Word's true and let every man be alive. And He said, I'll pray and He'll give you another comfort and bind you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Well, Jesus once again said, I am the way to what? Truth. Well, glory. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not. It does not say he seeth it not. It says he seeth him not. Oh, glory be to God in the wonderful day it is in our lives when we realize 
that we are not controlling the Spirit as if it were a it that we sin here and there. But the Holy Spirit, glory to God, is a person. Somebody say amen. Whose person is it? Jesus' person. It's the very life of God imparted into us. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And he said that I will not leave you comfortless. Very important for you to know that means I will not leave you as orphans. Amen. That's the literal translation. Praise the Lord. Send Matthew up here with that amplified Bible right there. I thought it was up here. It wasn't. I've got a couple of things I want to read out of that tonight. Hallelujah. But he said that he would not leave us as orphans. Thank you, sir. With your slip shoelaces. Amen. <laughs> but I will. What did he say? Come to you. Who will come to you? I will. I will. Now we just letting the word speak for itself right here. He said, Yet a little while and the world sees me no more. But you'll see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. And in that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Who glory. That's shouting territory. I said that's shouting territory. And then verse uh, 15, I want us to read it just a couple of verses. Verse 7 and verse 15 and 16. Verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now compare that with what I've just read in John the 14th chapter in verse 20 when he said, I am in my Father and you're in me and I'm in you. And now in John 15 and 7 he said, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Come on now. Verse 15 John 15, John 15 and 15, Henceforth I call you no more servants. For the servant knows not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. Somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Oh, glory to God. And this is the one I get. Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. And I've ordained you that you should bring forth much fruit, greater works. And that your fruit should remain. Here we go again now. And that whatsoever you shall ask in my name, he may give it to you. Ask the Father in my name. Now flip the page. John 16. Praise the Lamb of God. Verse 7. Nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you. That I go away. For if I go not away. The Comforter can, will not come unto you. But if I depart. I'll send him unto you. Oh, glory to God. What was he talking about? Departing that flesh. That prison house that had shut in the glory. Read in Hebrews and you'll find out the greatest veil read in twain wasn't the one in Herod's temple. Somebody say praise the Lord. But the Bible says you've got to press through even the veil of his flesh. You can't know no man after the flesh and find God. You can't even know Jesus after the flesh and find out who God is. But I'll tell you what, we come in by a more excellent way. That is a way that's through the veil, a more excellent ministry. And through the veil, I say, that is the veil of His flesh. That's what Hebrews said. Glory be to God. So all these people is saying you got to rend the veil, turn the veil down. That's not so. The veil's been torn down 2,000 years. 
Praise the Lord. Somebody said, why don't I walk in? I'll tell you why. Your mind needs to be renewed. You need a washing by regeneration of the Holy Ghost to see the way. Seek out of the whole son And so the Bible says right here that in verse 8, when he's come, he'll reprove the world of sin, righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and judgment because the prince of this world is judged. That's for all them dear folks that thinks we're all awaiting the judgment. Blessed be God, the one that was awaiting the judgment got the judgment. He judged him. Not only did he judge him, he cast him out. Not only did he cast him out, glory be to God, but he brought us in. And he said right here in verse number 8, or verse number 13, where did I leave off? 11, didn't I? 12, verse 12. I have many things to say to you. Hallelujah. But you can't bear them now. Somebody said, why couldn't they bear them? Because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. He was with them, but he wasn't in them yet. And he said, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Glory be to God. No, because he's going to speak of me. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying he's going to speak of me. Listen to it. But whatsoever things he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he'll show you things to come. He don't just want to talk to you about now truth. He wants to talk to you by revelation about things to come. And he'll glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. And all things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. For last verse I want to read here. A little while and you shall see it, not see me. And again a little while and you shall see me. Because I go to my Father. Somebody say praise the Lord. And I want you to know, hallelujah, that 50 days after he came out of the tomb, they did see him in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem. Glory be to God. He seen that same Jesus, not another. He come of a whole young God of Ahia. For he said this Holy Ghost cannot testify of his own self. The only self he's got is me. He'll have to testify of me. Can you say praise the Lord? And it happened just that way. Now back to our original a lesson in Ephesians the first chapter and I'll tell you in a minute why I read all that. I want to read from verse 9 where I believe as the last verses I read to you last week having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and that which is in earth. Somebody say praise the Lord. It's getting harder and harder to divide this thing. It's getting harder and harder to separate these things because the ideal of God has always been one. One. I am one. My God is one. My people are one. My church is one. I have the one name, one truth. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope, one calling, and we've been called after that one calling. And that's the reason he started out, out in Ephesians 4 said, What were there, the vocation where we you've been called? We all have the same calling to find our place in Him. To be glorified in Him. Praise the Lord. But here Paul says that it's not going to be easy to keep them separated. There is a heaven, there is an earth, but that evidently is not God's full plan. If it were, when he got both shot on my high, when he had got ready to plant it Eden, he wouldn't have planted it in the earth. He would have planted it in his own heaven, invisibly seen. But he didn't. He brought it to earth. Yeah. His desire is not for earth to go to heaven. Right, right, right. His right. desire is for heaven to come to earth. Oh, he keeps planting people 
on the earth. Yes. He's got six billion of them. Yes. And he still keeps birthing them Amen. in the earth. Amen. If he was done with us, he surely would cut off life yes, right. and wouldn't let it multiply. Yes. But the siding junction of God's agreement on everything was its multiplication. He saw trees were good and he put seed in them to bear after their own kind. He saw animals were good and he made them the ability to procreate with one another. He saw man was very good. <laughs> and if he ever gets ready to annihilate, the first thing he'll do is remove the ability to multiply and replenish. He ain't getting ready to annihilate. He's getting ready to incorporate. Mm -hmm. uh, the Amplified Bible says he's getting ready to consummate. Mm -hmm. uh, this earth will be colonized with the kingdom of God. The government is on his shoulders. Not Obama's or whoever, what other person gets in the White House. They have not the final control of the government. And the government and the world itself, the world and the people in it, are not going to the dogs because a bunch of knotheads get things in a mess. <laughs> but rather the Lord Jesus is going to overthrow every ounce of man's government. And there will be but one Lord and one kingdom. Somebody say praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus in whom we have, hallelujah, hallelujah and, or rather we have made known unto us the mystery of His will. We don't think about His will being a mystery, but it is. And the thing is, anytime you read the word mystery in the Bible, it simply means something that cannot be understood with a natural mind. It takes a Holy Ghost revelation to understand a mystery. And it's not very hard for you to know what to do concerning the will of God. You need not spend countless hours in your prayer closet asking God to reveal His will to you because of one little scripture in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And be ye not unwise what the will of God is concerning you. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The first item on God's will for you is that you stay full of the Holy Ghost. If you stay full of the Holy Ghost every day, you won't have to worry about the will of God. You won't have to fast seven days to find out what His will is. Just stay in the Holy Ghost. Don't be unwise concerning the will of God. Just be filled with the Spirit. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh yes. And listen, listen. In my, when you stay full of the Spirit, His will is never grievous to you. It's never hard for you to do His will. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, you just say, you'll say yes before He ever asks you. <laughs> you'll say yes, Lord, before you know the question. <laughs> you hear me? He'll pull a yes right out of you. And then tell you what you said yes to. Hallelujah. Glory. But there is a birthing of things coming because the, the fullness of time simply means the womb of time is going to get too small to hold all that God has got in store and it will have to give way to an eternal realm that will take over and then things will not move according to the clock things will move according to the word and spirit of God can you say amen so then we have this verse in verse 11 that says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel, come on now, of His own will, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own. Now, first of all, you must know that anywhere you read about the word work in this format, it's talking, that's a power word. Yes. That's a power word. That's the energy of God. <coughs>
bringing something about in your life. That's the power of God producing something in your life. So if He's going to work things after the counsel of His own will, then that means it will take the Holy Ghost to bring it forth. It will take the Holy Ghost to manifest it. Can you say amen? amen? But I just read to you in John 14 where He said, I'll not leave you as orphans. And blessed be God, we have the confirmation of it right here in verse 11. He's not left us as orphans. He's given us an inheritance. We're not orphans. We've got a Father. Mm -hmm. Well, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Romans 8 says it this way. You've not received the spirit of bondage again under fear. But you've received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Amplified Bible says you received the Spirit producing sonship. Oh, glory be to God. You've received the Spirit producing sonship. My God, that you can't be a son on your own, but the Holy Ghost is producing it in you tonight. Uh, Galatians says that the Spirit cries out in our spirit. Abba, Father. My Father. My Father. Oh, glory to God. I'll tell you when Jesus was praying to those disciples in Matthew 6, He said, Our Father. But when He rose from the dead and Mary Magdalene had Him by the feet, He said, Go, I ascend unto my Father and your Father. Hallelujah. And then blessed be God over here in Ephesians or over in Galatians we read the Spirit sends forth the Spirit of adoption crying out in our hearts. Abba Father, my Father. Glory be to God. He's not just the universal Father of all creation. He's your Father. He's my Father. He knows my name. He knows your name. I am personally acquainted and associated with How do I know? I talked to Him today. I had a conversation with Him today. He's my Father. Father, he's your Father. Amen. You can see Him as our Father all day long and you won't never relate to Him in a personal way. All you'll know is the Lord's Prayer and that ain't the Lord's Prayer. That's the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer is John 17. Jesus didn't pray the Lord, that prayer for Himself. That ain't the Lord's Prayer. He prayed that to give the disciples a figurative way to pray before He was resurrected. But that prayer alone won't carry you today because there's nothing in that prayer about the name of Jesus. And anything you ask in His name, that's an epistle prayer. That's this day in which we're living in right now when Christ is resurrected and is set out on the throne of our hearts and taking up his abode on the inside of us. Glory right. be to God. Amen. Well, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Don't know if it helped you or not. But I'm having me a time. <laughs> really, I could care less if I'm helping you right now. I'm in the spirit and so good I'm helping me. I didn't bring the crank with me tonight. I left it at home. <laughs> I give out Sunday night cranking. I thought I'd take a break tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. I know some of y'all love it when I make them comments, and I do it just to see your reaction. Amen. But uh, it's so wonderful for me to leave the earthly ministry side of the Son of God, just a sent one, but just one, singular, bound to a body, shut up in flesh, bound in time, bound to the geography of that land, bound by mileage of how far he could go, bound by seas. If there was no sea, they could float the boat to get him to the next town. All of those things crying out in him. And him crying out in Luke 12. I have a baptism to be baptized with. And oh, how am I straightened until it be accomplished. Simply meaning I long for the hour when I can take this flesh to the cross and lay it down on the altar of time forever and take on that glory that I had with him before the world was. Yes. Glory. Well, I want you to know He did it. And because He did it, 
I can do greater works. But I'm not an orphan. I'm not a stranger. I'm not alienated. I'm not even a commoner. Well, glory. I'm of the royal kindred. I live in king's quarters. I speak with kingly authority. I request boldly. I declare freely. <laughs> oh yes, I dare to pray in those outer skirts where men won't pray, where they won't go because they've never been there before. I'm not a slave to the familiar. I expect the extraordinary. Hallelujah. <laughs> the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I want you to know we've obtained an inheritance. And according to Peter's epistle, it's an inheritance undefiled, one that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, but ready to be revealed right now in this season and in this time. I want to talk a little bit about that because I mean the Spirit spoke that so strongly to me today. You're not orphans because you've obtained an inheritance. Your father did not die and leave you with nothing. He died and left you everything and then rose again to appropriate it. To oversee it. To make sure you came into it all. Oh, glory. You can't have a New Testament without there first be the death of a testator. Yes. He only died once under sin. That's all he needed to die. Can you say praise the Lord? Now then, I submit to you fully and thoroughly, this is the truth and gospel of it. You don't lack nothing tonight. Everything you need is in that inheritance name that you've got. You have access to everything you could ever want. I don't mean you've got to get it. I mean He gave it to you. Healing, health, finances, wealth, family peace, ministry, gifts, signs, miracles, wonders. Are you listening to me? All that. But the question arises, why does not one walk in the abundance or manifestation of the divine inheritance. The answer is simple. You can read it on your own time. Galatians gives us the answer. I believe it is the fourth chapter, maybe the third. I think it's the third. No, it ain't. It's the fourth. He said, the heir. Everybody shout heir. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There's life there somewhere. Amen. I, I heard it. Heir. <laughs> means recipient kindred relation inheritor yes. oh Tom I saw you. if you've got a little boy running around in that house that's going to be the heir you might be, be kind of soft on how you talk to that little boy <laughs> you might want to watch how you treat him because yeah. he's getting ready to come into a fortune and when he comes into that fortune, he's going to rule that house. Yes, but as long as he's a child, he ain't no different from a servant. Yes, the only thing that keeps man out of the fullness of inheritance is not identifying with sonship and growth in the kingdom. Yes. They remain in that pitiful, petty, childish stage, always expecting somebody to do for them what they ought to be doing uh, for their self. Yes. Are you listening to them? With believers, they want somebody to do their studying for them and somebody to do their praying for them and somebody to do their whatever for them. And there are some people that are so uh, petty and frivolous and, and childlike that they, they, they think the church even ought to be their full-time support. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. If they get a need, of course, the church is associated with need. That's, that's wrong. That's just rotten to have that kind of an attitude. If all the church is to you is an association to help you get a need met, you will never be faithful to that church. You'll just use it when you're in need. How do I know this? Because God's done the same way. The only time people go run into God is when the kids go wacko and the... 
and the rent's due and they ain't got it. And the mill bar's getting low. And then they don't run to him because they've got an inheritance. She thought of a whole yama son. I go to him because I know the glory is mine. I know I got plenty. I know in my father's house there's bread enough and to spare. I know. Oh, I don't think so. I know so. I'm well aware that he's got a miraculous supply. But I don't obtain it because I associate him. Glory to God. With troubles and trials, I obtain it because I know I'm a joint heir with Jesus and an heir of the Father. Somebody say praise the Lord. And maturity brings that on. Maturity brings that on. Maturity brings that on. There's such a thing as fellowshipping with saints. Instead of, you know, positivity has to come in. Good things spoken. Godly things spoken. Away with all this, the only time people talk is when there's something negative to talk about, uh -huh. something bad to talk about. Some of you, your gas tank stays empty until you get a little news on something, and then you get full and running over. You just can't wait to get to the church house where you can get a hold of somebody and tell them about some big event that happened. They, man, most of the time it's negative. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I've seen people in church all my life going to a doctor's office get a report and I saw the saints go running to them. What did the doctors say? Oh, they had excitement all over them. I ain't never heard nobody run out in the aisle and say, what did the Word say? What did Jesus say? What's the report of the Lord? Never have seen that happen. Never have. But I'll tell you what, if God has anything to do with me putting enough strength in me to do it, I'm going to produce a people that is able to get as excited over what the Word has to say as they are about all this stuff. It don't matter anyway. I don't care what 10,000 doctors said. One word's all you need from the Lord. <laughs> That'll cancel out everything that that report said. But i tell you what, eagerness for information is a sign of immaturity. It don't take much to entertain you. It takes a lot to entertain me. Yeah, I'm talking about spiritually wise because I've got a deep well of spirit. I, 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 I want the depth. Yes. Yeah. Are you listening to me? A few lights and a few good songs and a few rock and reels on the stage don't satisfy my spirit. I've got to have something that reaches in me and makes my heart beat a little faster. I talked about that Sunday morning. I've got to have some romance. I've got to have a, oh, glory to God. <laughs> I've got to have an experience yeah. with a relationship and see this, the child, he don't care. He just runs, flips around, goes from person to person, house to barn, certain quarters to his father's room, and he never di di uh, differ, you know, di differs between the two. One's the same as the other to him. And that's the way it is when you don't find out the depth that's in Jesus. It don't take much to entertain you. Some preacher can be babbling off and it can be 100% wrong. But just because it's on Christian television, Television. Why ain't that wonderful? I think that no, that ain't how it works. I know when I leave the servant quarters. I know when I'm in my father's presence. Hallelujah. I know when I'm hearing from God. I know when he's talking. And I know when it's just the babbling chatter and banging dishes of a bunch of servants who don't care whether they're spiritual or not. Amen. Amen. You understand that tonight? Yes. How do you know? Because I read that verse and got a hold of it. I'm not going to call you servants anymore. How do you know a servant from a son? A servant don't have no clue what God's doing. I just read it to you. The servant knows not what his Lord doeth. Wish I had a dime for some meetings I've been in. And the amount of people there that had no idea God was saying nothing. You know why? Because it goes back to that immaturity thing. The only time they get involved in anything is when it concerns them. If they've got a need, they'll really praise the Lord. Yeah. That don't make your need come no faster. God ain't meeting needs because you jump two steps instead of one. He's meeting needs because that's who He is. He's a need beaver. Hallelujah. He's a supplier. Are you listening to me? 
So we've got to we've got to find the difference. We need to know when I'm whether I'm in service quarters or whether I'm in Father's house. How do I know the difference? Because if I'm in Father's house, I know what's going on. But if I get among the servants' quarters and they're doing all that rattling and carrying on and, and, and foolish jesting and, and talking about frivolous stuff and arguing over stupid things, I'm, I'm saying, I don't even know what's going on here. I can't even relate to none of this. Lord, why don't we go back up there to the house? Or not somebody say, praise the Lord. It's called inheritance. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's called my right to come into complete and total surrender to my Father and for my Father to entrust me with His voice. And when He speaks, I'll know He's speaking because if I'm not a servant, I'll know what my Lord is doing. Well, glory to God. An inheritance. Everybody say an inheritance. Now we read on down in there and find out that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the earnest of that inheritance. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's the earnest of that inheritance. Now I'm going to tell you folks, people that's got the Holy Ghost recognize when they're walking in fullness of God, they recognize when God's talking. They recognize when the Lord's speaking. They recognize when something's happening. And they'll obey that something. They'll yield to that something. They'll honor God. They'll listen to Him. They'll understand Him. They won't stand there with that dull look on their face when God's talking. But they'll perceive and they'll believe mm -hmm. and they'll become a part yep. of what God's doing. Hallelujah. Hear me and hear me well. You're not an orphan. You've got the Holy Ghost. I will not leave you as orphans. I will send unto you a comforter. Lift your hands and praise Him tonight. Father, we thank You for this great hour. The privilege of knowing who we are in You. We yield ourselves to the working of the Spirit of this hour. Help us to see that we're not born to stay out in the quarters of a servant's hall, not knowing whether we're going to be kept on from one day to the next, but we belong in the Father's house, for the Son abideth in the house forever and forever. Amen. 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 I bless every one of you in the name of the Lord. We'll see you back here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for tomorrow night prayer service, 7.30. Amen. Seven o'clock.